Hi everyone, Lisa from Spellbound Miniatures here and today I thought you definitely need a warning before you watch the rest of this video. It's not for the faint-hearted and it certainly made me cringe whilst I was performing this very necessary operation on my poor walnut family squirrel tails. If you watched my unboxing video, you'll have noticed that the tails came rather flat and almost beaver-like looking where they'd been squished both in the packaging and with the clothes that the particular squirrel was wearing. And um, once I had a chance to play around with it, I worked out that you could actually pull the tail from either side and it felt like it was hollow inside. So I thought maybe I could use a pipe cleaner and put that inside the tail to help fill it out, but also will enable me to give it some expression of holding the shape um, in future videos. So what I'm doing here is I've got a kind of needle tool and you can part the pile of the fur and there's a kind of um, woven um, material underneath that's holding the fur and it's handily, it's quite perforated. So what I used was one of those um, stitch unpicking tools that you can use if you've made a mistake or you want to rehem something. It is quite sharp, so only use this if you're grown up. And you can put that into the little mesh that the tail fabric is made from and slide it in. It's a little off camera here, but I took some photographs, so I'll show you that up close. But the overview is you slide it in and then you can just use it to cut through the mesh. So hopefully that's a better view there of the um, mesh fabric and then using the unpicking tool slide it in just a couple of holes enough to insert the pipe cleaner. Then I just used the unpicking tool to widen the gap a little bit so that it was at least big enough to put the pipe cleaner into it. And then I got the pipe cleaner, um, just the single one at first and put it in to have a play around and see if it would fill out the shape and hold a shape too. Once it was in, I was very happy. It did actually hold the shape and I could bend it, which will help to create interesting photographs and videos. I then tried doubling the pipe cleaner and did the same thing again. And I felt that three sort of widths of pipe cleaner were actually probably the ideal one to use. Filled it out enough, but didn't make it so bulky that it looked false. Now here's a tip if you're worried that the wire might poke back through the tail. Get some um, round nose pliers, needle nose pliers. You can just grab the very end of the wire and bend it over on itself and then um, sort of squish it down again and make sure that it's squished flat so that there aren't any wires sticking out. I wouldn't even suggest this modification if you are going to have children play with these. This is purely something that um, in the miniature world we would call a display only or collection only item so that they're not meant to be played with by children. For obvious reasons we've made a modification that has taken it away from the CE standards for children's toys. But it's probably good practice so that the wire won't come through the fabric and you have to keep sewing it back in or it might rub through the fabric and make a hole. So back to the triple uh, layer pipe cleaner. I'm just squishing it there so it will go through the hole because you don't want a massive hole in the tail either. Um, it was quite flexible though the material and put it in and until I'm happy that it's right up to the top of the inside of the tail. And then pull it back out slightly, grab some wire cutters and trim off the excess that you don't need. And then I grabbed one of my clay modelling tools and used the end of that to push the wires back in. If you had taken the time to round them off, then you wouldn't need a tool to do that necessarily. And then kind of using the needle tool then to make sure that all of the pipe cleaner material is inside the hole. And then I grab a needle and a thread with some brown cotton on it and sew up the hole. 
it's a standard needle and some embroidery thread I think I had. This bit makes me cringe but it's a necessary job. So I'll just fast forward it but you can see I'm sewing up the mesh material and occasionally making sure that there's nothing from the pipe cleaner material poking out and that there's no fur getting trapped in the stitches. So then we can just tie a knot, cut the excess thread off and you could always use a brown sharpie to colour in that white mesh if you felt it was showing through too much. And I also use the needle tool to fluff out some fur around the sewing area there to disguise it. So there we have a nicely fluffed out and positionable squirrel tail. And I'm sure over time the fur will look even more natural once it's allowed to decompress. So I now go on and do that for three of the other members. I don't do it for the younger brother. His tail actually seems fine. Oh, and here's a quick comparison, like a before on the left and an after on the right. And you can see the before is very floppy, it's very thin, and it's not a great shape. And the one on the right looks much better. I'm sure that squirrel is much happier.